Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Hannah Nabings, and I post vlogs every day Monday and main channel videos every day Friday. And today I am doing another installment of webcam cases. Today we will be talking about Andrea, Andrea Yates. I'll link my icon to the playlist somewhere up here. I never know what side it's on. But Chengagangwangin, this case talks about death of children so i'm gonna hold my mic because my family's home and i don't want to be talking super loud so i'm gonna hold my mic but probably down here um starting off this case it starts june 20th of 2001 nasty yates the husband leaves on work his wife andrea who is said to at this point have extreme postpartum depression fills the family bathtub with water she starts drowning her children in one by one, but she sings with the youngest three sons, and then she moves on to the baby. After she's done drowning them, she, like, places them in, like, I believe her in Nessie's bed, and then, like, covers them up. Um, her oldest son saw the baby floating in the bathtub, became scared, and then Chang ran away, she caught him, and also held him under the water until he stopped breathing. As soon as the kids were dead, she calls the police and confesses to what she did. Um, like, I think she called the police, but before they arrived, she called her husband, Nasty. He asked if anyone was hurt, and she said the children, all of them. Some things to know about Andrea, she graduated from the University of Texas School of Nursing, ooh, um, with a BSN degree, I'm not sure what that is, but she then went on to work as a nurse at Houston's MD, Andrea Sin Cancer Center, so, her first thing I got in with depression was when she was 24 after a breakup, and it was after this breakup she met Anasi, the husband and father to the children. After Nella was born in 1994, she became a stay-at-home mom. She had two more sons quickly after she had Noah. Noah's the oldest, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that, but... She was not a birth control, and the couple believed that children were a gift from God and welcomed them with open arms. When Anasi's job in acquiring a six month stint to Florida, the family packed up only what they needed and moved into a Greyhound bus with, like, at this point, four kids, I believe. On June 16th of 1999, Andrea called on SC stating that she needed help. He came home, loaded the kids and his wife into the car, and they had headed to Andrea's parents' home. Nessie said she seemed to be fine and comfortable. He couldn't be wrong. Um, when everyone napped, she took Fungity Chang'azadon tablets. This windows would have killed her. If her mom didn't find her, and she eventually, Andrea eventually ended up getting help. She was extremely emotional, saying things like, I have a family to live for, and you know, that's great and all, but CPS got involved, obviously. Did they help the kids? No. <laughs> they stated there was no signs of neglect and abuse, so they didn't look further into it. It was three weeks after this that Andrea tried to slit her thing out. Nessie found her and she was admitted to the hospital. It was at the hospital. The doctor told she told the doctor she was hearing voices and she was fearful she was gonna hang at somebody. While in the hospital, it was determined that she had a disease which was postpartum psychosis. It, literally a medical emergency that endangers both the mother and the child's life, like, um, and I see the husband played the role of the supportive father and husband, I know all of this is something else. 
August 16th of 1999, Andrea wanted offering medication and wanted as many children as God and nature would allow. With that being said, in 2000, she got she still got pregnant. And then it was shortly after her last daughter, Manny, was born. I believe they only had one daughter, which... It was after Manny, the baby, was born that Andrea's father died. And this caused her mental health to worsen. She, st she stopped drinking any liquids, began to cut himself, and then refused to feed her daughter. Oh, and I read the Bible obsessively. The Yates were extremely religious. I mentioned that they moved into a gang of bus that they actually bought off a traveling minister. A lot of women this minister spoke, uh, like, initially stuck with Andrea, including the idea that bad mothers who created bad children and children and children and to burn in hell. In May of 2000, about four weeks after, oh, before one, my bad, <laughs> before the murder, she was unadmitted back into the hospital, and it was about two weeks before she drowns the kids that she was taken off an antipsychotic. Haldol. I don't know how to pronounce that, but H-A-L-D-O-L. -L -Hal Haldol? I'm not a I'm not completely sure. Um, if you see me kind of like to the side, I have my notes pulled up. I should have mentioned that, but I didn't. So I have notes pulled up like seven pages. By the time she had killed the kids, she believes Satan, like Satan possessed her and like damaged her children somehow. She had told the police that she believed after the surroundings her children would go to paradise. Getting into the sentencing now, because the crime has been committed, there was so many things that we discussed, and I would love to get into it. The family dog. Uh, the dog was allowed to run free, but when the police arrived like, at the home, the dog was locked up. They believed the, do the dog was locked up, so... It went in thing with Andrea killing the children. Another thing was the doctor has told Nusty not to leave her unsupervised, and guess what he did? He left her unsupervised. Um, there was like a little speculation in this case that she got the idea to jing out her kids off a Law and Order episode with a sibling plot, but the creator of Law and Order was like, that episode is not a thing. That never aired. So that was obviously like not a thing. March 12th of 2002, after deliberating for less than four hours, a jury found Yates guilty, rejecting her of the insanity defense, and she was sentenced. She was sentenced to life. I didn't put that, but she was sentenced to life. On January 6th of 2005, a Texas Court of Appeals and Advanced the convic Convictions. This happened because a California psychiatrist and prosecution witness admitted he had given materially false testimony during the trial. In his testimony, he had stated that shortly before the murders, a law, a law and order episode aired featuring a woman who drowned her kids. Like I said, this episode never aired, but this occurrence resulted in a new trial. Once again, July 26th of 2006, after 30 days of deliberation, Yates was found not guilty by the reason of insanity, and defined as defined by the state of Texas, she was declared insane, she was then transferred to a mental hospital, like a high security mental hospital, and then only about a year later, she was transferred to a low security mental hospital. When I want to talk about the ex husband, well, now ex husband, Ernesti, he does not blame her for killing the kids. Fun fact. He blames her mental illness and the doctors, but not her. 
He remarried and ended up having a son, but in 2017, him and his now second ex-wife divorced. Um, my personal opinion, if Rengasi knew not to leave him alone, why did he do it? I feel like he has some blame in here. Like, she literally, like, he left her alone and he, she literally killed five kids. What the hell? Um, it is also said, like, from this, like, finishing little sentence, it's said that she watches videos of her children every day and graves in death. Which, I, I don't know. I mean, people change, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. What's your opinion? Finishing it off. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, please do join up your opinion below and also feel free to go watch other videos on Miss Andrea Yates. She is something else. And this is one of those cases that stuck with me because she literally killed five kids. I will see you on Monday for a vlog. Bye.